a little while ago, I put out the call that, hey, I was going to do an Ask Me Anything type of video where you can ask me any of the questions that you want. They don't have to be movie related. And I'll just, you know, I'll answer them. And maybe it's a chance for you to get to know me a little bit better or to find out some things that I don't necessarily talk about on the channel in the course of a regular movie review. I got way more responses than I thought I was going to. So this might end up being split into two or maybe even three videos, depending on how long it goes. Luckily, some people ask questions that are similar to what other people ask, so I can kind of condense those. But I'll just go through and answer them all to the best of my ability. So to kick it off, my name is Chris. I live in Northern California. I am married. My wife and I have been married for 23 years. We have two sons who are 18 and 21 years old. We also have a dog named Buddy. Uh, he's our only pet at the moment, Buddy the Brave. He's a terrier mix that we rescued and he's outstanding. He's awesome and he's spoiled way more than our children are or basically any other pet we've ever owned. All right, so let's just dive into some of these questions and I, I, I'm going to have to wear my glasses to read these. Hopefully there's not too much of a glare, but you know, I'll take it off or take them on. I don't know. We'll, we'll just happen to see. And my eyes are too good for contacts, but terrible enough where I have to be able to use some cheaters to be able to read stuff, especially when it's on my iPad or anything. But here we go. So my friend in the UK, Carl, he wants to know how, about roughly how many hours a day do I have to watch programs and do I have any spare time for myself? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I do have a lot of spare time actually. Well, not a lot of spare time. I mean, I, I work about 45 hours a week at a regular job. I work in the healthcare industry doing marketing uh, for a hospital system. And I watch things as I can. I don't get a lot of sleep. I don't get as much sleep as I probably should. And sometimes I find myself uh, rather tired at the end of the week. Uh, but, you know, I, when I come home, I, we watch shows. I have uh, my Google Calendar stocked with all the things that I, I want to watch, that I plan to watch. Now, I don't always get to all of those. And sometimes I watch them and then I don't review them. And that also comes down to just time. I mean, I it's... You know, it's that balancing thing of family, work, uh, just hobbies or lack of hobbies. I mean, just even housework, you know, and, and yard work. Things that need to get done and or errands that need to be run. So I probably watch, I don't know, two to four-ish hours on average a day of, of TV or like on TV, you know, whether that's movies or whatever. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, uh, and it really just depends on what's going on. Carl also wants to know, do I have a, a collection of Blu-rays or DVDs, or do I do it all through st through streaming? Well, I have currently, I did a, like a rough count, I have about 600 Blu-rays, and, and that encompasses DVDs, 4Ks. Um, I don't buy streaming-only movies just because I don't trust the internet. Um, you know, I, my internet sometimes goes down. I have Comcast or Xfinity here in the United States. And while it's fairly stable, it's not a hundred percent foolproof. And sometimes I want to be able to watch something. And when I want to be able to watch it, especially if I own it, I want to be able to just put in the disc and go. I don't want any buffering issues or anything like that. Before DVDs came out though, we had a large collection of VHS movies and shows. I mean, probably four or five hundred of those and we just you know I donated them sold some of them just got rid of them in in various fashions as we converted to DVD and then made the transition to Blu-ray and now some of them I do over to 4K. I do prefer to buy them with the digital version because sometimes it is nice if I'm someplace or you know if I'm just on my laptop or I'm, I'm working remotely or whatever and I want to be able to put something on that I own that I've seen before and I can have it play through my head and I don't necessarily have to watch it but I can listen to it. So having those, those digital versions are nice. I have a lot of streaming subscriptions. I mean we have uh, what Netflix. I've had Netflix since they first came out in like 19 1999 um, when it was just the DVDs before streaming. So I've, I've, we've had a subscription for a really long time with that. Um, I now have Disney Plus, I have Hulu, Amazon Prime. I mean, Amazon Prime, we pay for that because I like the service and the video stuff, the, the streaming service, the video platform, that's just kind of free to me because I use it for shopping more than anything. And hey, it's an added bonus. Played around with, uh, you know, other services. We have HBO Max, uh, which actually just came, I think, because I have HBO and I have Hulu. And so it 
we just kind of came on there. I'm not sure how much I really enjoy that platform because it doesn't have an app for it, like on my Roku or anything. So some of the programs that are on HBO Max aren't always on HBO. And so that is just an annoyance to me. I've had the trial subscriptions to Apple TV Plus, to various other platforms as well. And so it, it varies, but I mean, my mainstays are Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, Disney Plus. Those, those are the ones that I basically stick to the most. So a question for Susan, from Susan is, what got me started doing YouTube movie reviews? Now, honestly, it was kind of happenstance. I mean, I, well, not really happenstance, it was planned. But I have for a long time, we've discussed movies in our house. We've broken them down, we've you know critiqued them, discussed their meanings, everything like that. I took some classes in college uh, that were basically about TV and film criticism, and I found that I really enjoyed them. I enjoyed breaking things down and, and examining what all the messages are within them. Now that does, if you've never done that before, it will ruin your TV or movie watching experience for a while because you don't watch them mindlessly anymore. And so you have to learn to, <laughs> to turn off your brain at some point if you want to just sit back and experience it without trying to analyze it, without having you know some of those deeper things come that you pick apart within a movie and find the meanings, find the, the value in different things. Um, and I'm able to do that. I mean, there, there are plenty of stupid movies or just things that I love that I don't need to examine, that I just turn off and I go. Now, when I was thinking about be doing YouTube and starting YouTube itself, I was just, I wanted to do something around movies. I wanted to do something around entertainment. And I thought about doing like a short attention span type of theater. And what that would entail is kind of doing a, setting a time limit for myself to do a movie review, whether it was a minute or two minutes and literally cutting it off. If it was mid-sentence, it would be mid-sentence and, and cut it off. And while that is intriguing and funny to me, from an execution standpoint, and also from if I wanted this, which I do now, to become something that could become like a money-making opportunity, that's not a sustainable business plan. And so I just decided, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'll do the movie reviews. I'll talk about them, I'll tell you what I like, what I don't like, dive into some of the meanings, um, try and always back up my opinions with things. I don't always succeed with that, but you know, I do my best. And then I thought, you know what? I like food. I, I, I like snack foods. And so that's where the munchies came in. I had a list of a whole bunch of different names for the channel and I landed on movies and munchies. Uh, sometimes I, I really think that I should do more munchies, but at the same time, you know, it's sometimes hard to find ones that are worthy of talking about, um, you know, and it's just when I happen to stumble upon something or even friends will say, ooh, have you tried this? I'm like, well, no, I haven't. And then I'll, I'll grab it and I'll share it with you. All right, so some of you have asked, uh, do I have a favorite director or cinematographer uh, or even favorite film genre or film? And well, that's, that's a lot of bunch of different questions, but uh, for favorite director, I mean, that's kind of tough uh, because there are so many different movies that I like that, you know, and I like what the directors bring to them. One of my favorite directors though, if I am not maybe not necessarily making him the absolute favorite, but one of is Edgar Wright. And I just love uh, what he's done. I love his techniques. I love just some of the, the zaniness and the, the quick cuts that he does and the way he has a signature style to it. And, and I have really grown to appreciate that. I think what set me off on really enjoying him was the series Spaced with Nick Frost and Simon Pegg. And it was, it was random and it was funny and it was kind of just like stream of consciousness almost and a little bit ADD. And it, it spoke to me and I thought it was hilarious. And then just watching more and more of Edgar Wright's stuff as he developed as a director and brought things out. Now I'm not thrilled with every single one that he does, but for the most part, I really enjoy him. I don't think I have a favorite cinematographer. I mean, I love when movies have beautiful shots to them and when they're framed well or when they do creative things with them. I mean, I think of 1917, just most recently, where it was shot to be like a one continuous take. I thought that was wonderful. I mean, it was great to see. The execution was so cool and it, it sucked me into the film. And so, I mean, yes, I love that. But then I think of like Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Some of those shots are outstanding as well. They're just so beautiful. And I think of some of them where you have this really wide shot 
and we're so far away so that we can see the grandeur of the mountain and the landscape and there's this tiny little road and you just see it and then all of a sudden we see this car just kind of going along and it is tiny in in the big grand scale of what we're seeing and it takes the time to watch it go about halfway through the screen and those type of shots i really like but i even think uh, this movie from, gosh, what was it, early 90s, I think, Judgment Night, with Cuba Gooding Jr. and uh, Jeremy Piven and Dennis Leary. Some of those, while I enjoyed the movie, but some of it where they would have the face, the actor, off to one side, really zoomed in, and something else going on way behind them, something like that. I mean, those, those stand out to me, just when they're unique shots. So I appreciate that. And I don't even know who the cinematographer on Judgment Night was, but I, the, that stands out in my memory as something cool. As far as favorite film goes, that's just, I don't even know. I mean, I have a, a long list, and even trying to make the top 10 changes a lot. I mean, some of them that I have in my top 10 would be The Untouchables, or The Hunt for Red October, The Way, The Way Way Back, um, The Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, um, even Two Towers. So, I mean, it's, it, mm, gosh, I don't know. There, there's a bunch in there that are always kind of moving in and out um, and struggling for that top spot. I think movies, though, that really speak to me are the ones that, that have an emotional impact to me, that really they draw me in in one way or another. And, uh, you know, because I like them, because I put them in my top 10, that doesn't mean that they are the greatest films of all time. It just means that they really spoke to me. And it's something that I will watch over and over again and don't get tired of them and, and pick new things out every time that I see them. So Beth wants to know, what is the first movie that left an impact on you? Gosh, I don't, hmm. The first movie I remember seeing in the theater was Raiders of the Lost Ark. Now, I may have seen some movies before that. I, well, no, I remember seeing uh, the original Star Trek in the theater. Now, I didn't make it all the way through that. I remember I fell asleep in that. And I rewatched it a couple years ago, the original one, and now I know why I fell asleep. I just, I don't enjoy that movie. I mean, I, I love the Star Trek universe. I love a lot of the movies. Um, even the TV show was great. Uh, you know, William Shatner, but I, just that movie, you know, I fell asleep and it was, it was pretty boring. Uh, but Raiders of the Lost Ark, I remember, um, I was enthralled with it. Just seeing, I mean, Harrison Ford and the snakes and the whip and the fights and the, the fight with the, the, with the big dude uh, who gets cut up by the airplane. I mean, that was that was gross and weird. And, you know, as a young boy, it's like, ooh, that was kind of cool. And then, of course, the whole face melting thing. I mean, come on, that sticks with you. And it was just, it. I don't remember if it scared me or if it disturbed me, but I remember remembering it. I mean, and, and just if that makes any sense. So that, I'm not sure that that left a, a massive impact on me like his life changing or anything, but it is certainly one that I do remember. And that's like the first one that I really remember watching in the theater. So I hope I'm pronouncing this name correctly. It's Kamo Yami. Uh, do I play video games? If so, what is your favorite games to play? Um, I do play games off and on. I mean, I have a Switch. I have several consoles. Um, I mean, I even have like a PS1, I have a, a Sega Genesis, um, you know, we have a PS2, uh, Xbox 360, Xbox One, um, even a Nintendo Wii. I've had a Nintendo 64 at one point. I don't play video games too often. More often now, I play them on my Switch. Um, and they're just some kind of random games that I play. Um, I do enjoy, though, on my Switch that I can play my SNES games and the Nintendo games, you know, just like Legend of Zelda, uh, just the, the original ones on there. And so I think that's a lot of fun. Um, I'll play like Lego Star Wars, um, Star Wars Battlefront. Oh my gosh, on PS2, that is one of my favorites. I play those with my sons um, and I'm not good at it necessarily, but it's still a lot of fun. So do I have any film critique aspirations? No, not really. Um, I mean, I just want to continue doing this on YouTube. I hope, I, I joke that, you know, I'm a semi-pro couch potato. I hope to go full pro. What that means is that I would like to do YouTube full-time, that that would become my main gig, uh, the main money-making opportunity for, for me to sustain 
you know, bills, house payments, stuff like that. I am nowhere near that. Um, this, this does not make a lot of money. Um, it makes enough pretty much each month to offset the cost of on-demand videos or when uh, theaters were open to, to offset a little bit of that cost. Not much though, um, especially if I took the whole family to go see a movie. Well, that would be more than what I would make in a month on YouTube. So Indo wants to know, I rate profanity on my reviews. Why? Am I religious? Well, I am Christian and my faith is very important to me. But for the family-friendly ratings that I put in there, that's not out of any type of religious view. That's because I'm a parent. And I just, I felt it was important to let people know, hey, you know what, this is what it is. And it's not, I don't typically use it as a judgment in my ratings. I mean, I'll tell you if I think something is excessive or if I think that they put it in there unnecessarily or there's just way too much of it. But it typically doesn't affect the, the recommendation on whether or not to watch it. But I do know that as parents, and I work volunteer with, with uh, junior high and high school kids, and just from a parent to a parent, if it's important to you, then that's awesome. If, if you don't care about it, you skip right over it, and you, it doesn't even bother you. But I, I do want to say, you know what, there is a lot of profanity in this, or there's not a lot of profanity, you know, or there is some sex and nudity, because maybe that is something that you pay attention to in your household. Or, you know what, violence. That's something that you try and stay away from for your kids or for yourself. And so those are really the reasons uh, that I do that. Jeanette wants to know what uh, my blue ring stands for. And I think a couple other people had, uh, Eric had also asked that. Um, honestly, the ring isn't for anything. I This came in a set of three. It is a silicone ring. I got a, a blue one, a gray one, and a black one. The blue or the black and the gray broke. And so now I just have the blue one. It's more of a fidgety thing for me. Um, when, like when I'm not on camera, I just, I play with it. I've had at times spinner rings where I would just sit there and, you know, you spin them, whether it was on my thumb or my finger. And it just, it, it's a fidget tool. And it's something that for me to kind of keep myself grounded a little bit to, um, I have a little bit of OCD, I have a little bit of ADD, I have Tourette's. And so some of these things help to focus some of that energy into different areas and help me just uh, focus on certain things, especially in meetings. And that becomes socially acceptable. So uh, there you go. Uh, some people have asked like my wristbands are, are these little bracelets that I wear. Um, I have them, they vary. Uh, from where I get them, how long I wear them. I've had some where kids, like I mentioned, I, I volunteer with high school and middle school kids. Sometimes they'll be selling something and so they'll give me one. I wore one for like four or five years uh, that one kid had given me and it was just because uh, the kid meant something to me and I had it on there and there you go. This one uh, right now, I got it from a, a food and wine festival. And it was, it was the wristband that you wore to show that you belonged in this festival and that you could get uh, the food and the wine. I don't drink wine, but I do like food. And so I had it on. Well, it glows in the dark. And so that's why I still have it on there, uh, just because I think it's cool. Uh, this one that I have on right now is from Teen Cancer America. And it's just an organization that uh, helps out adolescents and young adults with cancer. And so, um, I, I thought it was a cool, I like the organization. Um, I wanted to support them. And so I wear this. And so, you know what, well, now I look, I've talked about it. So maybe you want to find out a little bit more about that organization as well. It's Teen Cancer America. Nick wants to know, do you think you'll ever end up doing classic movie reviews or do you see yourself just sticking to new releases? Uh, right now, uh, because this is kind of a side gig, I mean, I have my regular full-time job. Uh, doing the newest releases is the priority for me. Um, I would really like to be able to dive into libraries and just go deeper into different genres, into different um, just, you know, eras even of film and just dive into those and examine like the 60s and do a bunch of different videos on that or reviews of just horror movies. And I could even go even narrower like horror movies from the 70s. And, you know, I do have a huge interest in doing that, but it does come down to time right now. And uh, for, because, again, this is the side gig in a, you know, from what I regularly do, which is work for a living, unfortunately, not fortunately, unfortunately, I love my job. I love what I do, uh, but I love doing this as well. And so I just have to, it, it's the time sacrifice. It's, I have to judge and, and determine what am I going to do? What am I going to spend the time on? And well, 
there you go. Eric wants to know, what products do you use to keep your hair and beard so fresh, my dude? Is it a home trim or do you have the barber do your beard also? Well, thank you. I <laughs> appreciate that. Um, it's home done. I have paid for two haircuts since 1991. Uh, I, at that time I had a couple of terrible haircuts that I had paid for and felt, you know what, this is stupid. Uh, I can create terrible haircuts on myself and not have to pay for them. So why do that? And, uh, luckily my girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife, she was cutting my hair and she did an awesome job and she cut my hair for years and years. And then when our boys were born, that just, you know, time became <laughs> harder to do. Uh, and so I had to learn how to cut my own hair. And so I did. And I have all this time. And so it's, you know, if I mess up, well, I mess up. There you go. Whatever. It's hair. For me, luckily, it grows back. Same with my beard. Um, you'll notice if you look back at other videos, I have had a long beard, a shorter beard, barely a beard, no beard. So that comes typically when I have uh, taken part in the St. Baldrick's uh, head shaving charity thing, fundraiser um, for childhood cancer. And so this last time I not only shaved my head, but my face as well. Uh, if we get to do it again coming up in 2021, I'm not sure I'm going to shave my beard. I did not like my look without that. I'm cool with being no hair up here, but here I'm just a little too chubby and it helps hide things a little bit. And, you know, that's just my own vanity there. Lola wants to know why plaid flannel? Well, honestly, I have worn flannel for a really long time. I didn't do it just for YouTube. It just happens to be now I always wear a flannel, almost always wear a flannel uh, for my YouTube videos, just because that becomes kind of like my trademark type of thing. Uh, so when you see me, I, I have the flannel on, but honestly, I wear flannels year round. Uh, it does get a little tough in the summer sometimes because I, I tend to sweat quite badly because they're hot. Um, I have yet to find short sleeve flannel shirts, or at least ones that I'm willing to pay for. Um, I'm frugal, or read that as cheap, so I don't like to spend very much money on clothes. And so if I can find something very inexpensively, then I will do that. Uh, luckily, flannels, depending on where you get them, they can be very inexpensive. And so I will stock up. And I actually have uh, several on the way right now uh, for just to refresh my my collection. Mogram wants to know, in the background, there are hints of Funko Pop collection, which seems to be updated from time to time. Are you a collectible nerd by chance? And in what ways does it shine through? Well, I do have a lot of Funkos. Um, I don't do them for resale. I mean, if you look at them, you'll see some right back here on both sides of the bookshelf there. Um, that, you know, the what's visible is six of them, but I have, I don't know, probably 80 maybe Funkos. Um, I take them all out of the box because I'm not going to resell them. And I, I don't, I don't get every Funko that comes out. I'm not drawn to that. Um, I get the ones that, that really speak to me. And most of them are surround movies or TV. I think they're fun. That, that's really more than anything. I mean, I just think they're kind of cool. I do collect other things. I mean, I collect cigarette lighters, which I have done that for probably 30 something years, um, where I'll get them at um, yard sales, estate sales, antique shops, and I have them all over the place. Most of them are like in a safe right now, just because that's kind of a great spot to put them. Not because they're worth anything or that I'm trying to keep them safe. It's just the, it, it's a box that doesn't get crushed. So there you go. I also collect pipes. I have about 20, I think, um, tobacco pipes, which are kind of fun. Uh, I have some from my wife's uh, dad and her grandfather, as well as some new ones, some things that I bought at, um, at garage sales and, and estate sales and antique shops as well. So I, I collect things. Um, probably a little bit is that is due to OCD. I mean, I collect dust as well. I don't actually collect dust. I mean, I just, okay, that was a terrible joke. Mogram also wants to know, how do you make time to watch all those films and series? Some series have several seasons, clocking in on about 45 minutes per episode, and there are only 24 hours in a day. Yes. You are absolutely correct. And so sometimes, I mean, it is, you know, it's an all day thing. Sometimes it's uh, way late into the night or it's late into the night and then up again on the morning. Um, I really wish that Netflix would not dump 
a bunch of shows all in one day. I wish that they would space them out more because it seems like sometimes they'll release five or six things that I really want to see personally on one day. And that's like, oh, that's insane. There's no way in the world I'm going to be able to watch all of these. And again, it goes back to like I was talking about uh, before, it's balancing my time between work, between uh, house projects, responsibilities, you know, just family time like that. Now, luckily, very thankfully, my wife, my kids, we enjoy watching movies together. And so it's not necessarily a chore. Now, sometimes they've had to sit through a lot of crap. Um, you know, which is unfortunate because sometimes it has been in the theater where we have seen some terrible movies. Uh, sometimes it's just at home. There have been some times where we've started something and I'm about 30 minutes in and I'm like, okay, nope, I'm done. I'm not, I'm not even going to spend the time on this because it's just so bad. And other times it's like, well, I've spent this time and it is so bad, but I, I'm going to keep going through it just to see maybe if it gets better. There's no rhyme or reason to why I would stop one and not the other, which which, um, and I'm, I'm sucked into bad things sometimes, and admittedly bad TV sometimes is wonderful to watch. Somebody wants to know, the, what is the moment when I knew I had hit it big on my channel? Um, I'm not sure I've actually hit it big, big. I mean, I've had great milestones personally. Um, you know, I remember when I hit 100 subscribers. I was like, ooh, that's outstanding. There are 100 people out there who at some point or time have liked what I've said and chosen to press that subscribe button. Um, you know, then I, I hit 100 views on a video. That was huge and massive, and I loved that. I, I remember a couple years ago, there was uh, San Diego Comic-Con was going on, and they were releasing some, some trailers, and... Godzilla, King of the Monsters, that had come out. And that was the first video, I believe, that when I had done a trailer reaction for it, it got, I think it got a couple of thousand views. And I was ecstatic. I mean, I, it blew my mind that that many people, that many eyeballs, would want to first click on it and then watch and listen to what I had to say. Whether or not they agreed with it, that was a whole nother thing. That was that was fun too, because some people were like, you're stupid and you don't know what you're talking about, or how can you think this movie, you know, this about this movie or whatever. And that was just, that was a lot of fun. But then there was, I remember, I think it was the first video that just, that really did got a lot of views and that was the hold the dark explained it was a film on netflix and my wife and i had watched it and we turned it off and we we're like gosh i don't i don't know if that was good you know and we started discussing it back and forth and really hit upon some things that it needed to be dissected and so i spent the night just kind of mulling it over in my head in my sleep i got up early the next morning wrote a whole bunch of thoughts down and recorded it and then it just I was blown away that it just kept getting more and more views and I never want to lose that feeling of any of those of, of hitting the hundred subscribers of getting you know a hundred views on a video so I don't think I've hit it big I mean I I love there are some tools out where you can kind of get an estimate by how many subscribers or views another channel has gotten within a certain period of time and I look at that sometimes, especially on some of the bigger channels, regardless if they're movie reviews or not, just as a humbling thing. And it, 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 if my head ever starts to try and get big, it's like, oh, well, guess what? This person in 30 days got more subscribers than you've had in three years. And okay, that, that's not a judgment on anything. I mean, I more power to those people for creating something that people really want to see. But it's it's a humbling thing for me, and that's really the point of that. That I don't want to lose any of the excitement of of growing the channel, of just being on this ride in this experience, and having a lot of fun with it, and not losing sight that what I'm doing. I know that I'm not saving anybody's life by <laughs> by doing these movie reviews. I mean, hopefully, I bring you a little bit of enjoyment. Hopefully, hopefully, I bring you some some insight or just some entertainment. But other than that, I mean, I hey, I'm reviewing movies. I, I, this is fun, it's entertaining, and sometimes you'll agree with me, sometimes you'll not, and as long as we can walk away friends and have a great discussion, then that's all I'm really looking for. Jeanette wants to know, what's my favorite Guilty Pleasure movie? Oh gosh, I have a few. Now, Guilty Pleasure typically assumes that the movie is bad and that you, you know, you're kind of ashamed to, to like it, but yet you still do. 
and I'm not sure the movies that I like or that I love are necessarily bad, but some people, well, I mean, I don't think they're bad, but I, you know, I, I enjoy them. Um, so there is, let's see, Gentleman Broncos. If you've not seen that, that movie is awkward and it is um, bizarre and I find it very funny. Um, it's by uh, Jared and Jerusha Hess who brought Napoleon Dynamite and it stars the impeccable Sam Rockwell. And that man just makes everything better. But this this movie, it's it, it it has to be experienced. And it is not for everybody. I know. My wife is not a fan of it. My boys have grown to enjoy it a lot. Um, there are some quotable moments in there. But it is, a, you know, probably 9 out of 10 people are going to watch this and go, Oh, what in the crap am I watching and why would I want to ever see this again? There's also movies, though, like Strange Brew, which I absolutely adore. I mean, it is also a remake and a take on Hamlet, which is fun, but it is uh, Doug and Bob McKenzie. I mean, come on. How can you not enjoy the McKenzie brothers? Take off, eh, you hoser? Eric wants to know, what are your future plans with the channel? Your videos are always crisp and there's no spoiler and balance between what you personally enjoy versus a critic is on point. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, wouldn't change a thing. Do I feel the same way? Or think about adding different elements to the channel or starting another channel with a different passion you have, if any. Well, okay. So future plans with the channel. If later down the road, I like I had said before, I want to do more genres. I want to do uh, like older stuff, really, to be able to dive into just past things that are not current um, and really just, you know, do, do almost a video a day. Um, and I know that that has to involve time, which I don't have enough of time to do those. And so I try and focus on just the current stuff. Um, I'm happy with my channel right now. I mean, I'm always trying to improve. I watch other people's videos, whether they're movie review channels or not, and just to to critique myself, to, to watch how they do something, how they present, uh, different things like that. I mean, you see that I do a lot of jump cuts. Partially that is because of quickness and ease of editing. Um, I'm not making anything cinematic in this. I'm not really, it, this is a talking head video. And so I just, I, you know, it, it's quick cuts. And if I could learn to speak clearly, concisely, and not mess up ever, then that would be even easier. But as you've seen for sometimes, I put in some bloopers at the end of the video. Talking is hard. And when I choose to use words or a phrase that my mouth just doesn't want to make, well, hopefully that's entertaining to you, but it's frustrating to me. And it just means I have to edit more. Do I think about starting another channel with a different passion? Yeah, actually I do. I have some things written up already, but it comes down to time as well. And so I will at some point do another channel as well. It will not be movie review related, movie related at all. I mean, I'm sure that I will probably bring in movie references or TV show references or entertainment references into that because that's just kind of who I am. But um, it's not focused on that. It's more of probably more of a vlog type of thing just because I, you know, I don't know if it'll be successful. I don't know if anybody will even want to watch. And sometimes though, that is a different outlet for me. Um, I have made some storytelling videos before just from my previous uh, work experiences and some visual storytelling I enjoy doing that, but it takes a lot more time. It takes a lot more thought and uh, more shots, really. I mean, it's not just sitting down in one location. It's, you know, adding some movement, adding some motion, adding some elements outside. And so that does take a lot more time, but hopefully something that I can do in the next coming, I don't know, handful of years. Big Shadow 1138 wants to know, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Well, I will answer your question with a question. African or European? These are things you have to know if you're going to be king of the Britons. This is going to wrap up this first part of the video. I think we've gone on long enough. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for catching with me.